Hey everyone, welcome to the SolidWorks Experience webinar. We're happy to be here with myself. My name's Jordan Tadich, and this is... I'm Mark Martel. All right, Mark, what are we going to be discussing today? So Jordan, I'm not sure you're aware, but as of July 1st, we uh, introduced something called the cloud services with every new license of SolidWorks. What that is, for the most part, is all of our SolidWorks customers will now get the 3D Experience platform right from the get-go as soon as they purchase a new license. For all of our existing SolidWorks customers, they have the opportunity to upgrade the subscription plan to include cloud services. For how many, uh, how many dollars? It's roughly around three to four hundred dollars. And how many pesos? No idea. <laughs> well, we'll figure that out. So the, I think the question that a lot of us will have is, you know, what do you get with cloud services? The, um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. This is probably the biggest transformation to our licensing that SolidWorks, the SolidWorks community, has experienced since since ever. I mean, you've been around longer than I have. Can you remember anything bigger than this? I think the last big change we made is we made the three packages, right? SolidWorks Standard, SolidWorks Professional, and SolidWorks Premium. And we took all of those add-ins and we sort of bundled them together. It's a similar, I think, from, from that standpoint. Well, now that you brought that up, let me ask you this question. Does cloud services only come with one, one of those packages, or how does that work? So cloud services will come with any and all packages of SolidWorks. Okay, so standard, pro, or premium. That's right. So any new license of SolidWorks will now get cloud services. But let's dive into what you get with cloud services. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to cover that. We, we believe there's, there's functionality with cloud services for everyone, regardless of what level you want to use. And we're going to talk about three different levels here today. Okay, so what are those levels? Those are uh, share and markup. Share and markup. So that is uh, very briefly just the ability to share a SolidWorks file with anyone in the world. No one will need to install any software on the receiving end. That's right. And they'll be able to rotate around a 3D model. So that's, can, that's valuable. I think any one of our customers can take advantage of that. I believe they all do. I think they all now, everyone here shares data with their customers, their suppliers, manufacturing, with their own colleagues. So that benefit out of the box is going to be a huge one for most of our customers. Okay. Uh, what's the next uh, level of adoption? The next level of adoption is uh, store and revise. Yes. That's my favorite. How come? Because... Personally, I shouldn't say this. I'm a SolidWorks employee. I never really use SolidWorks PDM that much. I kind of defaulted to either Dropbox or Google Drive. It was just so simple. Um, and that's pretty much all the platform has become for me. Uh, it's just cloud storage, so being able to store all my CAD data up there, but it's CAD aware. Unlike Google Drive and Dropbox and OneDrive or anything else like that, it's specifically built for CAD, which We'll get into the details of we why will. that's so yeah. beneficial. So you can store your data on the cloud, and yep. you can also revise. In, you can include revision management as well if you yeah. want. Revise. Yeah. yeah. Final level. Final level. For the most sophisticated people that just want to dive really deep into this all. Or for those customers who want to grow into that third level. I think a lot over of customers will, over time will get to the third level, which is manage and control. Yeah, so manage and control, uh, putting it briefly, is... Yeah, data management at the next level. That's so right. if you are a business, like you said, that is growing, you're maybe gaining more employees, you're maybe gaining more customers, you probably are running into scenarios where you need more formal control over your data. So that could be change management, issue management, stuff like that to be able to uh, just better controlled processes of your data and all the people involved as well. And all of that that you just mentioned, you can do uh, in our web browser, which is what we're going to get yeah. into as we go through this. All right, yeah. so let's, let's kick this off. Okay. We're going to stop back at the, the first level, okay. which is uh, share and markup. Uh, and again, we believe that this capability could be used by all of our customers. A lot of our customers for the last 20 plus years have been taking advantage of e-drawings. Have you heard of that? Yeah, of course. Who doesn't have e-drawings? Actually, pretty much everyone I try to send an e-drawing file to doesn't have e-drawings. And then I got to tell them how to install it, and they got to get the right version. Uh, it's still kind of a frustrating experience. It is. So what you're seeing now in this video is now within SolidWorks, parts, assemblies, or drawings, a new drop-down menu that says share a file. You simply click on that. 
you can specify what type of format you want to send, whether it's a, a default SLD PRT or maybe a 3D XML, which is a little bit smaller and easier to view. Uh, you type in someone's email address or you create a link and you send it on its way. Yeah. And then the other benefit of like something like a 3D XML is you can protect your proprietary data That's too, right? right? Yep. So maybe you don't want the person that you're sharing this with to have the full feature tree of SOLIDWORKS with the native SLD PRT. But it's cool. You can do dimensions, you know, scribble. And this works well on an iPad too, right? Or like any kind of device. It really uh, does. It could be a mobile phone. Um, you can type text. You can uh, do you know, arrows, draw arrows, do circles, add awesome. comments. So it's a collaboration tool as well. As you saw, the person who consumed the data was able to add comments and all that annotations. And then when they sent it back, if you will, the SOLIDWORKS user, right within SOLIDWORKS, was able to see those comments and make additional comments or obviously make additional changes. It's really cool. I want to give a pro tip, too, for the people that get out there and start using this. Um, when you're making the markups, you can make one, and it's a 3D model, right? So take advantage of that. You rotate it around and make another markup somewhere else. Rotate it around and make another markup somewhere else. Zoom in, zoom out. When you share that markup back to the original designer, they'll be able to review each individual markup. It will rotate the model to the exact position, and therefore there's no confusion about what they're actually trying to communicate. That's why it's so much better than just a 2D snapshot, right? And emailing it. And all the comments stay historically on that component that you share. And it's not just to one user. You could share that with multiple people. Get and feedback all of their comments would yeah. be shown on the screen. So again, a really low level functionality that every SOLIDWORKS user can take advantage of, regardless if they're using a, say, SOLIDWORKS PDM that you don't know. I do know. Yep. But SOLIDWORKS PDM users can still take advantage of this. Uh, and of course, those SOLIDWORKS users who are just sharing their, uh, saving their data uh, onto a server on their local hard drive. Last question about that one before we move on to the next. How long does it take to learn? Well, you, you saw the interface, so I would say roughly, uh, let's say 15 minutes. 15 minutes? 15 minutes. I thought you were going to say 15 seconds. Huh. It's one button and it's one form. It's pretty quick. It's I, think, I think to find the annotations on the other side takes, sure, takes a sure. few extra minutes. Yeah, okay. All right, so we're going to jump into the second one, which we label store and revise. Uh, so it's cat aware cloud storage. So let's get into the video and join. You can go ahead the, and, this one's my favorite, and kick so us off. Yeah. I'll do this. Uh, again, this is when I was talking about, you know, replacement for generic cloud storage uh, solutions out there. They're great. They're convenient. They're free. Um, but to have something that's cat aware, one of the most challenging things that we've burdened our customers with for so long is managing CAD data. And uh, it's complex. Assemblies reference parts. Drawings reference parts. Drawings reference assemblies. And we've all historically used Windows Explorer to organize all this CAD data. Now, every single CAD designer out there knows what happens when you have a whole file path that an assembly is referencing to find a specific component. And if one character of one folder changes, what happens? I believe you're going to tell us, but I think it, it blows up, right? Yeah, I can't, it, if I it, try to open that again in SOLIDWORKS, it yells at me. Falls apart. You're trying to figure out where that, what was renamed, where that file is stored. It's such a headache, but because it's been, what, like 30 plus years, people have just grown to live with it. Sure. Um, and it doesn't have to be like that. You know, we've had more advanced solutions that require uh, professional implementation and things like that, but this is so simple to learn. It's so simple to implement. And all you have to do is start storing your data on the cloud, just like Google Drive or Dropbox, but you get advantage of never having to worry about CAD references breaking again. You get to take advantage of things like revision management. Everyone's doing revision management. Everyone's done the save as underscore R1, underscore R2, underscore R2, underscore final. You know, it's a... Uh, it, it's some some might even go into Windows Explorer and add the underscore <laughs> Rev2. Which and that breaks that everything breaks again. Things. Yeah, renaming files. So it's, uh, this, this, I think, is going to be the most impactful thing when our customers begin to actually store their data on the platform in a cataware environment. They'll be able to, my, 
my opinion and from what I've heard from customers so far, they're able to worry less about the hassle of managing CAD data and focus more on designing. And that is what our software is for. It's design software. That's right. Yeah. So I guess a couple of things I'd point out, not into the, get into the, all the details of this video, but it's all integrated within SolidWorks. You can yep. see the, the drop-down menus that were being used. The task pane to the right-hand side has been overrun by some of the information you want to see when you're saving an assembly to the cloud. And then the most important part, in my and opinion, once it's on the cloud, once it's on the cloud, anyone can access it via the a web browser. Right. And web browser installed on any device, right? So it could be a cell phone, a tablet, a Chromebook, a you know, a really cheap laptop. You know, it it doesn't matter. Um, you could view huge assemblies on any device and it's pretty amazing you know while we go through these videos you're seeing some some b-roll of a of a of a um of some designs from a, a wheelchair and this is from our customer bowhead corporation who's been using the three experience platform for a couple years now yep and on solidworks.com we go into the details of their of their story and how they're leveraging the platform and more specifically how they're leveraging cloud services uh, so they're taking advantage of not only sharing markup but they've definitely taken advantage of uh, c cloud Cat aware cloud, cloud storage. storage, yes. Which leads us now to the next step, which you've I jumped the gun. You a did. Little you bit. teased it a little bit. <laughs> but this this deserves a lot more attention than we we explained briefly during the last video. Revision management again is something everyone's dealing with. Designs change over time. The design process is an iterative process, and to just overwrite your previous changes all the time is not. First of all, it's not acceptable in certain industries. That's you right. need to trace, history. have traceability yep. of all the history of all the design changes, when they were made, by who, and what was the purpose. A yep. little note about that. So this offers all of that in a very simple to use interface. Um, everything is just a right click away. I want to bump a revision, then I just right click and hit new revision. All within SolidWorks too? All within SolidWorks. And the cool thing is now, one of the things that, you know, it's, it's one thing saying save as R1, save as R2, like we were talking about. But don't forget, you have components that are referenced by 10 different assemblies, because they're common components. And as those get revised, how do the other assemblies know that those files have been revised? There's all kinds of scenarios I think we've all run into many, many times, and that is why a platform taking care of this, these types of things for you is so necessary. There's so much burden on a common designer and it's really not fair how much we've dumped on them and how much responsibility we've given them with all those CAD files. I agree. And again, this is the second step, right? You, you share in markup first, you start storing your data in the cloud, maybe second. Yep. I mean, we all agree that revisions is part of design no matter how hard you try not to do that. Yep. But you could technically even do, you can leave revision you, you management alone. Yeah, you, you don't have to use it if you don't care yep. about it. Yeah, if you're, just, uh, if you're just someone that doesn't need that traceability, that one of the reasons I love revisions though is because a lot of times I'll make a, an idea and I'm not sure if it's going to be a good one. There we go. So by bumping a revision and doing my changes there, I can always fall back on that previous uh, revision and then branch off from there again. Well, you used the word branch, but we're not going to get into that for this webinar. That's fine. Um, but that capability also exists. Everything just comes with cloud services. Yeah. And that's why we're talking about these different tiers is it's up to you how much of it you want to use. So our purpose of having this little webinar right here is just to let you know what is available. And if it interests you, you know, you can obviously talk to DMD or your, your reseller to figure this out and, and learn more about it and they can uh, help you get it implemented and, and get rolling with it. So I think this leads us to our third category. Okay. I believe it does, uh, which is manage and control. And again, even the manage and control category as a whole does not need to be jumped in all at once. You, no. can, you can take baby steps back into it. It's like a menu. Exactly. You got the, you got the appetizers, that's share and markup. You've got the uh, entrees, well, I guess that doesn't really go, well, yeah, maybe, entrees, store and revise, and then you've got like dessert and other things, sides yeah. and things like that with the uh, manage and control. And this example is, is great because all we're doing here is we're, imagine your colleagues who are not SolarWorks users mm -hmm. who want to give you feedback on your design. 
So within a browser, they can bring up their your subassembly or your assembly, and they also can add markup capabilities, similar to share and markup, but yeah. a little bit more of a controlled manner. You can see on yeah. the left-hand side, it's a different panel that we didn't have initially. Well, let's remember, you could share, you could use share and markup feature with anyone externally, and That's they true. don't need any kind of licensing yeah. or anything like that. But when you're collaborating internally, they will have licenses, and that will unlock much more greater collaborative workflows, right? Yeah, you can see here, so they made different markup views, and as they click on the view, it rotates. It's very similar to the comments we saw in the first video. Yep. Uh, one thing that we just were, were looking at on the right-hand side of SolidWorks in the task pane is a thing called collaborative tasks that also yes. come with cloud services. Love it. You know, to-do lists. We all have a to-do list, whether it's in your design or in your product or at home. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we can work on to-do lists. We call them collaborative tasks inside of the platform, and again, anyone can add a task for anyone. So I can go ahead and add a task for you, Jordan, to do a little more work. Maybe I can tell you to, to learn SolidWorks PDM. <laughs> well, it sounds pretty underwhelming when you say we could do to-do lists and collaborative tasks and things like that. The reason it's so beneficial is because you can assign it to designers. And not only that, but you could attach a CAD data. And not as an email attachment where it comes disconnected with everything else. It stays connected. It's a source data. And now just assigning tasks to each one of the designers makes it so much easier for everyone to stay on task. That's right. Right? <laughs> cool. Yeah, so notifications come in automatically, like you, like you said, so they can get uh, notified that they have a, a task to do. Uh, again, just to, we'll, we'll highlight this part of the video because they are about to, to share this markup inside of a cloud of task and again it's very seamless that you can do right within the web browser uh, you don't even need to have SolidWorks to do this which is kind of convenient so this is the first segue into manage and control and I would argue this is sort of on the this fence is, yeah I'd say this one's more uh, store and store revise uh, it's very easy tools to learn 3d markup is one app very simple uh, collaborative tasks super simple and fundamental yep, here it is right here yep and, uh, and yeah, so I would, I would put this in store and revise, Mark. It's very easy to learn, very quick. And I think a lot of people can find value in this. Fair enough. Now, now we'll get on to right, the more advanced users. Now we'll get into users. more of the, uh, the manage and control. We'll, we'll touch on uh, issue management with this next topic. And I, I like issues. We talk about this a lot is because... Uh, you like issues? Oh, I do. <laughs> I, I feel like I get them a lot. Uh, <laughs> issue management, it's, it's a great little concept within the platform because within a web browser, anyone in your company who has access to the platform can raise an issue. Mm -hmm. They can obviously make an issue regarding one of your designs, yep. but they can also raise an issue about the level of food quality in, in the cafeteria. Yeah. That, what we're just seeing right now is the users, when they submit an issue, they can click on the 3D geometry and point out, put a little, like you're on a map and yeah, you're yeah. dropping a thumbtack exactly where the issue resides, like not geographically, but geometry wise, right? So I think the coolest thing about this is exactly what you said, anyone in the company, because when I, before I worked for SolidWorks, I worked for a stamping manufacturer and what we had out on the shop floor for, because, you know, the engineers design the tooling, the processes, and then the people on the shop floor actually execute all those processes. And they're the ones that run into all the problems the that, that the engineers the didn't are, think of. Yeah. Or maybe there's just a material change or some variable that was, you know, not, not addressed. What they would have are these huge binders. And they would fill out this form, just handwritten and they would leave that at this one desk at the end of each shift. And a manager would have to flip through every single one and then probably type that into a spreadsheet. Who knows what they're doing with it? It's so much easier to communicate when you have the 3D model. Right. And it gets easier to explain what the actual issue is when you can, when you can mark it up like that. And it goes back again to traceability, the history. It's all digital. It's all digital. And well, I think I know what's coming next. Because once you determine an issue, once you find out if this is an issue that's going to be addressed, you think about who are you assigning the issue to? Oh, wait, I know. So you get the other binder out, the ECO binder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you, exactly. you create an ECO. Is that how you do it? Yes, and there's another form for there's that. Another form for right? that. All these things that were so manual before have really been automated. And it's not just the automation, it's the 
clarity of communication as well. It's the fact that the appropriate managers, or the, whether they're managers or not, the appropriate people are being notified when something of their interest is raised to their attention. So you could see here, uh, the very first question is, who are the members of this yeah. engineering change? Who's involved? Yeah, who's involved, whether it be the designer, someone, an approver, or something like that. And you can go ahead and track all that so everyone is on the same page. You know, but forget the binders, that's ancient. What is still a lot of people are doing? Email. Email. Yeah. Email threads. Dreaded email threads where they're sending PDFs, screenshots back and forth. Everything's out of date as soon as you hit send. And this will be a single source of, source of truth that everyone can trust. So the workflow here was someone raised an issue, probably someone in manufacturing saw something in that assembly in that viewer. Mm -hmm. They raised an issue. The engineering team agreed that it is an issue. But they in order to make a change, promoted they, it. they promoted it. They made a change action against it. Yep which eventually, I believe, is going to make a new revision? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so when the, it finally falls into the engineer's desk, right, and uh, laptop, I guess, right, because it's all digital, they'll just go ahead and trigger that change action as they make their changes, and that change action will automatically get attached to all the documentation, the CAD documentation, that they have modified. So anything that gets modified, it's like, okay, that was changed, that was changed, that was changed to execute this change sense. action. Again, it's pretty simple. Full traceability, full reporting, full history. Yeah, and we realize a majority of our customers don't need that level of formality. Yeah, right? today, maybe they might need it today, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow, yeah. Um, and, and that's why we have this tiered approach where we give you everything and you can jump into as much as you want but we know that uh, you know, there's something in there for everyone. There's really a lot of value in there for everyone. I hope that this, uh, this webinar covered that pretty effectively. Um, anything that you're interested in, just let us know. Um, and we can go ahead and help guide you, give you more information, and help make sure that you're taking full advantage of all this amazing value that's been added to every new license of SOLIDWORKS moving forward since July 1st. And we just touched on the surface. There's obviously yeah, a lot more detail into all three of those modes that you can get access to from SolidWorks.com. Obviously, you can go ahead and contact DMD. They'll yep. be glad to, to go into full explanation of all this uh, functionality that you now have at your fingertips if you're a new customer as of July. Yep. Uh, if you're an existing customer, they'll also have all the information you need if you want to go ahead and upgrade your subscription plan to include cloud services going forward. Yeah. And don't forget everything beyond what we cover too, right? Yeah. There's, there's a whole world of functionality on the, on the platform, whether it be simulation and uh, one of my favorites, X-Shape, uh, subdivisional modeling, so many creative CAD design workflows that get unlocked. Uh, there's, there's, there's a lot uh, on the platform. Yeah, so the cloud services is a segue into the, the entire 3D Experience platform. Once you're on the 3D Experience platform, it unleashes amazing technologies that's at your fingertips. So yeah, once your data is stored there, you can start digging into some amazing stuff that's, that falls under the Dassault Systems umbrella, not just the SolarWorks umbrella. All right, well Mark, I think that was a, a thorough review. Um, I hope everyone uh, appreciated it. Like I said, if you have any more further questions, let us know. Get a get a hold of DMD, and uh, yeah, that's great. Enjoy uh, SolidWorks Cloud Services.